when I first saw Kate's work and met Kate in the early 90s, I felt like I was in James Joyce's Ulysses. I just kept saying, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this is it. Yes, yes. One of my pet loves is we all need the work of other people. It's a fool that works in a vacuum in today's world. It's a rich thing to have colleagues. It's a great thing to have colleagues. And I want to tell you that the last time I was invited to give a 20-minute talk, I drank a cup of coffee, and I ate not one, but two chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> and I was through in three and a half minutes flat. <laughs> so tonight, I said, Katie, I got this problem. And she said, she gave me a Xanax, and I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I want to talk about, I'm self-taught, so I have my own thinking in some respects. I don't come out of a, a graduate school, and uh, although ironically I find myself teaching uh, in one. And I think of the big picture, and the big picture is the universe is commonly agreed now to be 13.7 billion years old. The Earth, our beloved Earth, what the poet Robinson Jeffers called only a little planet, but how beautiful it is, is commonly agreed to be 4.3 billion years old. People like you and me show up 200,000 years ago. Representational art shows up 50,000 years ago. It was an obese woman. Gorgeous, gorgeous thing. And what I love is on a Friday afternoon, September 20th, 1839, aboard a steamship sailing into New York Harbor comes the instructions for the first announced photographic process of the garotype. Our beloved medium is a mere 175 years old. It's not even a blip on an eyelash. And look what's happened. Look what's happened. It's a tsunami. It's a tsunami of images. There are, I kid you not, 2.4 billion photographs weekly, <laughs> weekly uploaded on effing Facebook alone. <laughs> I don't make that up. That doesn't even get to Instagram and all that other stuff. And it's mostly, here's, here's who I fell in love with. Here's my grandchild. Here's what I ate last night. You know, uh, this, kind, this kind of thing. Uh, it's extraordinary. But if you're in love with this profession, you think, well, geez, how do I consume that? How do I traffic in that? How do I think about that? How do I talk about it if I'm talking to colleagues or students? And I'm not quite sure. So I go the other way. I think the small thing. I prefer small issues. The big issues I leave to Swanee <laughs> or Stacy. Maybe they can answer how we traffic in 2.4 billion. I come from a small part in Texas on the Texas-Louisiana border, and my mom was a single parent uh, before it was quite so fashionable, and she was a photographer in the 50s. And I start growing up in the 60s, and uh, it was a wonderful thing. I remember the dark room when I'm five years old, that kind of thing. And then later, as life is wont to do, she gets Alzheimer's. And at that point, I'm a portrait photographer. I sort of did the non-Texas thing. I followed in the footsteps of my beloved mom. So I made some portraits of her at the last part of her life. but. Most of my ideas and most of my influences and most of the things that I cherish uh, come from the animal world or popular culture. Sometimes it's from aspects of theology. Sometimes it's from folklore. Uh, and for a long time, I worked on projects. I would generally give myself two to three years to finish a project. I would tell myself, again, I'm James Joyce and Ulysses. I'm going to write a novel with pictures. It takes three years, uh, that kind of thing. And I did a series of uh, books. And 
during that time, I did a number of editorial things. Uh, uh, and most of the subject matter was um, uh, the world of children or birds or stars. Uh, and it's before the uh, advent, of course, of the uh, digital evolution. Everything I do, pretty much like Kate does, is on film. And it was a wonderful, heady experience. I used the word of world of animals, which is another thing we had in common. And then, as life is wont to take you, I get sick, and I get problems with an eye. And I lose the vision in my left eye, and so everything except in the top corner is all muddy. But if I shut that one eye, you look good. I just got depth. So, big deal. So I fooled with negatives, and I tried to find a way to make that expressive. It was a small period in my work. Then other things happened, um, and I start thinking, I can't roam the world quite the way I did. Uh, and I'm going to work closer to home in some respects. And I start uh, 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 exploring historical processes. And uh, in the early days, I did uh, pretty much what Kate uh, ended up taking further than I did, uh, uh, shadow pictures, what Henry Fox Talbot called shadow pictures, which we now call photograms. Uh, and later, my wife gets ill. And part of the treatments um, were that she wept all the time, not out of sadness or pain, but her eyes watered all the time and tears went down. So I started to take photographic silver gelatin paper and blot her tears like Kleenex and make photograms uh, of tears. And then I started doing wet collodion prints and I started using ether and alcohol and gun cotton. And if you do that all day, the ether makes you feel pretty good, kind of like the Xanax. <laughs> so, uh, but I don't recommend it, nonetheless. So. Uh, and I've really enjoyed this process. And I'm going to continue it for a while. I, see, I use the same sort of motifs, the exp uh, exploration of uh, sort of ritual things. I call this series Ghostland. Uh, and I use a lot of the swamp areas uh, not too far from where I live. And I put all kinds of things in there. Pilgrim at Tinker Creek. I did a series uh, of 18 images of my favorite books. Uh, and I turned the page on the whole book and did a long exposure. Or the things that live around there. Again, the birds or the stars. And then I got interested in the bioluminance, biophanies of uh, those swamp plants and the energy that you find in <coughs> this, uh, these landscapes. So I started doing this group, which is brand new, and it's very exciting for me to do. And then my wife gets really ill, and she lives three years and seven, uh, seven weeks. Now, this is not a modeling story, because there's some, some students in here, I just wanted to tell you, uh, over the four decades we were together, I did a number of portraits of her. I put them together just for this uh, to, 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 to show you. But here's the point. On the last day of her life, we have hospice care in our pretty bedroom, have a pretty backyard, 100-year-old oak. She sleeps uncharacteristically late. She wakes up at 1 p.m. And she sits up a little in the bed. I get out of the chair. I open the drapes. Looks out upon that 100-year-old oak tree. It's a sunny day. And she says, what a beautiful world this is. And she goes back to sleep. And she never woke up again. That's the last declarative sentence out of that woman's mouth. That's a legacy. That's a great, great thing. So the last few photographs I'm going to show you is, is uh, some things I've been working on the last 10 days because as uh, your work revolves around your life, 
uh, when you, if you're in the arts, you rebalance your life all the time. Sometimes it's love, sometimes it's money, sometimes it's man, all kinds of things. You just rebalance it. But one of the things you do is uh, you have a closet. You gotta give stuff to goodwill. And these are the two last portraits I've made her of her wet plate. This was two years ago. This was six months ago. If you have blue eyes and collodion, they turn white, ghostly. It's really gorgeous. It ain't no stinking digital trickery. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, I'm from Texas. I'm bullshitting you. I love that stuff. <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> so, she kept her shoes in these nice boxes. And I thought, they're really beautiful. So I started photographing, for me, as a small issue, the mystery of her shoes. I like to show it to you because it makes me nervous. Because I ain't done it yet. And I don't really care. It's just nice. And it's one of the few projects I've done in color because I'm in love with the monochromatic world for reasons I won't bore you with. But the kind of a superfluous design or high superfluous design in some respects. It's got a patina of humanity and human being to it. Probably got DNA too. And I gotta give them away. which I'm going to do. So I still work long hours in the dark room, and I have things on the wall that people have sent to me, some from Kate, things from Swanee, and things that people sent me from jokes or things that help me keep going, and things like, we live at the level of our language. Whatever we can articulate, we can imagine, develop, and explore. We live at the level of our language. Ellen Gilchrist, Arkansas writer. The soul always begins a thought with an image. Aristotle. Above all, life for a photographer cannot be one of indifference. Robert Frank. And one of my favorites from J. Frank Doby, the folklorist, is all great literature transcends its nat native land. But none I know ignores its own soil. It's another thing I love about Kate's work. It's about her own soil. So for those of you that are students, I had a student that went on to do good stuff, make a bunch of money and all that. And he went to San Francisco. And he, like big in a, a company that dispenses uh, cutting edge medical technology information to the web. And he wrote me and he said, Keith, this guy, Doug Osheroff, came and talked to us. And he won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1996. And some of the stuff he says, you're going to like. <laughs> and there it is, baby. <laughs> you know, I know you can read, but. I like to do it anyway. <laughs> hey, look in an unexplored area of your landscape. Failure might be an invitation to try something new. Be aware of subtle, unexplained behavior. Don't dismiss it. Understand what your instrumentation is measuring. back off from what you're doing, because on occasion, you might gain a better perspective. And every time you do an experiment or try something new, you ask a question of nature. You have to listen to what she says. It's a beautiful world out there. And I went longer than three and a half minutes. <laughs> Thank you.